Legion Season 1, Episode 1 Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 1. Yeah, uh, really love this. Spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. Uh, yeah, before we dive in, this is... I, I don't know if this is my favorite like Marvel movie or show, but it's definitely the most daring and yeah, really, really appreciate that. I I know some people really don't like the stylization. I think it's perfect it's for for the for the story they're telling here. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, incredibly interesting. And yeah, I look forward to you know I'm gonna be doing episode two tomorrow, so I'm not gonna be waiting long. And I really love that it's style, stylistic from, like, the first frame. Like, immediately we're aware this is not a complete... This is not the usual kind of, you know... Yeah. They're not, they're not trying to be straightforward here. And, yeah. I, I quite like the montage of David from baby to adult. And... Yeah, his his snark when, so I guess it's his sister Amy that visits at the the hospital. You know the thing about the the party. And let's see, yeah, and she, you know, it's when you have something tasty right in front of you, and no one else is gonna eat it. You know, you can. You might slip up and accidentally start eating it, and and he's just like, "How is it?" And yeah, some some great points made about life in a in a mental institution. And then we meet Lenny. Um, I have liked Aubrey Plaza for quite some time. Um, there's a lot of great stuff that I would like to watch that I hear she's excellent in. The thing that I... The first thing that comes to my mind of, of yeah, is, is I think she was excellent in some of the college humor, you know. it's It's been a long time since I watched, but she, yeah, she played Daria in the the one where, you know, yeah, there. It's a parody of that thing of you know. Oh, here's a show from when you were a kid or a teenager. Here's the movie from from later on, and she's yeah. You know, she nails it as Daria, not as a surprise to anyone. But no, the, the first and foremost, I think of her as the the parody of Princess Leia in College Humor's Troopers, or I suppose it's, it's uh, crap. What is it? Call now. A dropout now. You know, I'll I'll grant that some elements of that have not aged amazingly well, but I really thought she she nailed it. Um, I love the one where she's like answering questions. You know, that yeah, the the trooper has a crush on her, and he's like supposed to be asking questions, and she really doesn't want to be talking to him, and so she. Yeah, at one point, I swear I'll, I'll move on very shortly, but at one point he's like, your eyes are like sapphires, and she's like, that's not even a question. So he's like, your eyes are like sapphires? And she responds, that's creepy. Just absolutely love that. Just Yeah, fantastic. And yeah, her as Lenny is just glorious. Um, just fantastic. Like, there's a lot of people who would not have been who would not have done a good job with this this role. I enjoy her, like, you know, she acts like she's reporting on a horse race for CNN or something like that, you know, good hindquarters, nice hair. We here at CNN are, you know, giving her a good chance, you know, late, late uh, what was it, dark horse candidate, late addition to the race, just, yeah, you know, because in, she's in a situation where you kind of got to make your own fun, you know, and let's see. Then we have the yeah, another great montage and yeah, 
really not wanting the needle. And it's again that thing of, you know, his, yeah, he's having like a nightmare, so he's levitating the bed and then, you know, suddenly wakes up the, the, yeah, you know, it looks like, it, it sounds like to the, to the people working at the institution that he was, he like got violent and, you know, and, and I do quite appreciate, you know, I think some of the most interesting stuff of X-Men is the, when they can't control their powers, when, when it, when they use their powers without meaning to, that kind of thing. I think, yeah, those make up some of my favorite. So quite enjoy seeing that here. And that is the thing, you know. We, we like to think of, oh, you know, te telekinesis, that would be so cool. Well, what if you are having a nightmare and it makes stuff go, go you know, and, and later there's the, the kitchen thing, also, which we, we see clips from here very early on. And... Then Sid enters, and the the or the, uh, let's see, yeah, she gets to the the um, what's it called, the the group therapy. Actually, yeah, hold on, I just realized I didn't. I ended up not taking notes, right? I quite enjoyed when, yeah, you know, Lenny's talking about, you know, Sid, and yeah, <laughs> David does a very typical straight guy thing, and you know, tries to make. You know, yeah, he he has a crush on Sid, so he wants to to make a positive first impression. So he he takes the was it Twizzlers, I think they're called from Lenny, and she's like, "Dude, you can't do that," you know. And and he wants me like, "Would you like a Twizzler?" But it's you know they bump into each other, and Sid freaks out because you know her mutant power and and all. But but yeah, when Sid re-enters, you know, when she comes to the the group therapy session, you know, it's not an accident that she like she is the only one bathed in in light. And you know, obviously, the in-universe explanation is well, she's walking in front of like you know, there's no there's nothing covering the window back there, and it's it's a bright day, so you know. But she's the only one. No nobody else has that much light. So she's like an angel. And I quite enjoy her points about, you know, normal, and, you know, she pointed out, you know, Einstein wasn't normal, Picasso wasn't normal, and, you know, she, she points out, what if it's not just in your head? And, let's see, then we have the, yeah, I, I like the, you know, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. And, yeah, you know, he's okay, you know, he just wants to, you know, be dating, even if they can't touch each other. And we get another pop rock classic playing over. And I quite like, you know, they can't hold hands, so they have this, like, short cloth that both of them are holding onto, and it has the effect. You know, there's one point where, like, I think, let's see, I think he wants to go in one direction, and she wants to go in the other. So she, you know, she tugs, and, and he follows. That's... Very, yeah, you know, hand-holding boyfriend-girlfriend. One wants to go in one direction, the other pulls them in the other direction. Have, you know, we've seen that. That's a thing that actually happens. And let's see. Yeah, and the, the, with the, with the ref, reflections or shadows, uh, some, something like that, you know, it looks like they're, they're kissing. And then we're told that Sydney has just disappeared. <clears throat> and they talk about the the attempt at hanging and point out there was no noose, only rope burns, which I maybe we'll get an answer to later. Um, but certainly I figure, is it possible that he uses telekinesis to remove the because what we see is that he's like doing it with like electrical wire. Maybe his telekinesis untied that, so it just looked like oh, there's just electrical wire. Because you know normally you would find a noose. And let's see, yeah, and it's mentioned you know she's dead. And yeah, the the thing is, you know, can control things with his mind what happened next and let's see then we have the I really like the okay so 
I'm not 100% certain what the character name is, so I'm just going to be calling him Carver until I'm certain what his name is. I really like, like, uh, you know, at first he's just off in the corner when we, um, let's see, C Clark, when Clark is talking to David, you know, we see him carving away, and then, the, you know, every so often he gets, like, a reaction shot of that kind of thing, and then there's one part where he's just suddenly missing, and then he's standing over the other, and, you know, I tried to go over and thinking about it, yeah, I think the camera was off him for just long enough that he could have walked there, but it plays with our perception of reality, which the episode likes to do a lot, you know, every so often certainly at least some of what we're seeing appears to be David's hallucinations, but other things are not. There's just, you know, he's perceiving reality in a different way. Yeah, that's, you know, like, yeah, that is one classification of mental illness. And, you know, per perceiving reality in a way that does not conform with normal perception and I really love the set design when you know okay so so they're like you know what let's let's take a break there's some food coming in you know 30 minute break he walks out and we see like there's armed guards and there's this I don't know if that's division one you know they mentioned division one wants him executed right now you know but but these like it's it's like domino um, but like there's there's one and then there's two on the other side just yeah and you know there's a big empty pool and just all this stuff like really like you're like okay there's something else going on here something that they're not being honest with David about and let's see yeah the the we see the the kitchen which again you know to him it seems like it's out of his control, and it is, you know, yeah, it's his, yeah, other people thought, oh, he went nuts and just started throwing stuff in the kitchen, but in reality, it's because he's being overwhelmed by his psychic powers, his, his telepathy, he's hearing everybody's thoughts, which again, you know, that sounds like schizophrenia, he's, he's hearing voices inside his head, but the, yeah, it's his, you know, yeah, his telepathy is overwhelming him, and his telekinesis, he loses control of his telekinesis. And I like the moment where he's like, you're afraid of me. <laughs> just, yeah. And, yeah, they mention the incident. And then David kisses Sid, even though she says no several times. And, you know, it's clear something big happens, something with, like, the mutant powers or something like that. And... The, the, ah, what's the word? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's revealed long after, yeah, you know, they swapped places, they swapped power, something like that. Because it seems like, was it both? Because suddenly he is out. Yeah, anyway, um, and really, really gloomy with the, the dark red light and the flashing and, yeah, it's explained, you know, we swap because of the kiss, those are her powers. Love all the psychedelic stuff in this episode, I'm, and I hear there's more where that came from. And the, yeah, the, the area is empty, you know, the ping pong ball is all the, you know, and then we see that there are no doors, which, yeah, I mean, that goes beyond, like, it's one thing to, like, oh, he moves stuff with his mind, but... Like, he removed the doors. That's like reality warping kind of Matrix stuff. They changed something. And then we see, like, Lenny up on the wall. Like, holy crap, that was, yeah. Um, yeah, this is TVMA. I was gonna say, there's no way they got away with this on anything less than TVMA. Um, let's see. And then we have the... Um... Yeah, you know, David believes, though later it's revealed that that, yeah, he thinks that Clark was there at the, the inst at, at clockwork, but really, you know, it's Dr. Melanie Bird. And, yeah, the pen, like, twitches and then flies into his cheek. 
Very cool. Very nicely done on the effects. And, yeah, you know, he uses his power. He fights back, but is gassed. And I love the th Like, realistically, I mean, they must have had him up, like, lying his face on glass and then filmed. But the way the camera pulls back and you see, it's like he's falling down a hole because of the... Yeah, I, I love when fiction dares to show not what is happening, but how it feels. There's way too much resistance to, to that sort of thing. And there's too many people who are like, oh, I don't understand. Well, try. Are you trying? And the, let's see. Um, yeah, and we see David out and he goes back to his sister to live there. Can we take a second to just appreciate, I think, yeah, his name is Ben, the, you know, boyfriend, fiancé, husband of Amy. He's so into it. He's like, Arr, avast me mateys, here be thar candy. You know, just like, yeah, you know, it's only Halloween once a year, go for it. And... See, then we have yeah, and and Lenny appears to him down in the you know in the in the bedroom, and again just such great lines, such great delivery. Yeah, I know, I'm dead. You killed me. Not cool, man. Not cool. Yeah, technically it was her, but you know, hand and a rookie a bazooka, and then act surprised. You know, just. Holy, just really love, and and then, you know, she says, they're coming for you, and they're gonna kill you, and she's, like, laughing, and, like, he, she keeps saying, nope, they're, they're definitely coming, they're coming, you know, and, and, yeah, you know, the, the lamp, yeah, he again briefly loses control of his tele telekinesis, accidentally breaks the lamp, and, you know, Amy quickly removes the the sharp objects from there claiming oh you know ben has like you know he's he's doing gardening tomorrow and you know i yeah that is i've i've heard that is something that you know some people who who are you know yeah who get released from mental institutions and then you know yeah people around them act like oh you know still really dangerous and and to be fair sometimes it is but you know, sometimes you also really need to listen to the, the individual. And let's see. Yeah, and there's a bit where they're they're dancing and there's this French song playing, just yeah, fantastic. And yeah, he wakes up in the the pool, which has now been been filled. And let's see. Um, what does that mean? Okay, moving on. Right, and the, yeah, there's a resolution change. And I like, so, so yeah, um, Sid, like, her, her face appears on the, on the back of someone else's head. Was it a bald head, too? Yeah, something like that, you know. Don't stop, and he stops. It's like, I told, David? I feel like our communication is suffering. And the, the, yeah, you know, she explains, you know, I'm not really here. I'm inside your memories. And they do a thing where that replays once and then gets slightly further along. Very nicely done. And yeah, you know, she tells him slide, you know, hopefully not the electric slide. And yeah, he does manage to to slide out of there, and yeah, there's some attack off screen, and some skeletons fall into the water, and then we have the um, yeah, and briefly it looks like he's back inside clockwork, but it appears to be real, and let's see. Yeah, and the, they mentioned, you know, Melanie is waiting. Love the long take. Holy crap, that was that's fantastic. A little bit of, like, slightly obvious CG used for, for gunfight, like, muzzle flash. But other than that, yeah, not the only bit of dodgy CG. 
but really cool overall. And we do meet, albeit, you know, she, she doesn't get to do very much other than, like, fight. And she does have one badass line. Um, the, the, but yeah, we meet Carrie, played by Amber Midthunder, who I freaking loved in, in Prey as Naru, the protagonist. So, yeah, that's one of the, one, one thing I really look forward to about this show was her being on it. And, yeah, you know, there's the thing about, uh, let's see, yeah, it was the, the, um, what's it called? The, the, um, yeah, Wallace says, you know, don't worry, we like chasing people, and Carrie says, no, we like catching people. <laughs> Badass. But, but yeah, some really great choreography in the fight, good use of di the different powers, you know, some really, really cool uh, telekinesis. And, yeah, you know, near the very end of the episode, he, you know, David's like, I gotta ask Sydney, Sid, is this a real life? Is this just fantasy? And, you know, she says, I'm real, and I love you. And it takes him forever to... See, it's kind of gender stereotypical, but there's a lot of truth to it. Like, she saved his life. She has helped him through this entire you know a lot of lot of really weird stuff happening she's she's been helping him she she's she does say it before him and he still hesitates to say i love him so i quite appreciate that she's like um say it back you know and he does too after all and yeah you know it ends yeah come on son and it ends with a handshake really love that this was an excellent pilot I'm really glad that they didn't try to fit it into, like, as far as I can tell, other episodes are, uh, uh, let's see, the, yeah, the very next episode is, like, 49 minutes. This was, like, an hour and 10. I, I really appreciate that they didn't try to, because it would have been ridiculous to try to cut this down to that. You would have had to, to get rid of something really great. So, some IMDb trivia for this episode the different colored uniforms worn by clockwork psychiatric hospital patients are to classify a patient's level of risk of violence patients wear white uniforms no risk yellow mild to moderate red are high risk and huh Ex charles xavier's voice can be heard in the background swirl of voices early in the episode but patrick stewart does not have an acting credit for the episode several characters refer to an incident at red hook red hook is the name of the town next to bard college where marvel character gene gray was buried gene gray's father was a professor at bard college gene gray grew up in the area to depict ha Hall david hallward losing control of his abilities in his kitchen Actor Dan Stevens filmed separately from the practical effects with the images layered together to create a the final slow motion sequence. That was fantastic. I, yeah, really, really incredibly well done. And, and yeah, it's the kind of thing, like, you cannot be throwing knives when there's an actor right there. But, yeah, if there's nothing around, and, and, uh, and it also gave this slightly otherworldly quality to it. You know, it didn't just, because... Again, playing with his perception of reality. And, right, the, yeah. The mental institution David, Lenny, and Sid are in is called Clockwork Psychiatric Hospital, a reference to Stanley Kubrick's movie A Clockwork Orange, which the creator of the show, Noah Hawley, has said to have taken great inspiration from. As for the name of the institution, most of the patients can be seen in orange outfits, which also reference the movie. When David is a toddler, one of the toys on the left of the screen seems to be a yellow-eyed monster, which also rolls over by itself as the scene changes. The pool where David is held in this episode is the same pool. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's. It's used elsewhere. And let's see. Huh. The music playing when David runs after being on the public telephone is a lot like Pink Floyd's "On the Run" from the Dark Side of the Moon. After David breaks the lamp at his sister's house. Huh. You can actually see a character in a mirror watching David and Amy Tall. Very cool. Did not pick up on that. 
And let's see, uh, the room said is being kept in is th room 320, a reference to the comic book that started Legion Quest, the X Men story arc that introduced Legion, which was X Men number 320. Legion and all his multiple personalities made his comic book debut in 1985 in New Mutants number 25. When Sid and David switch bodies, she's able to tap into the powers of one of his personalities. And let's see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this one has the ability to warp both time and reality, which would explain how Sid was able to change the structure of the patient's room, leaving no doors as well as trapping Lenny in the wall. And let's see. During the episode, there are various people that only David can see. The old couple when talking to his sister, the man in the greenery when he's sitting with Lenny. And, hmm, I feel like that might be a spoiler, so I'm not going to read it out loud. Let's see. And also... Right, so yeah, um, David's imaginary girlfriend is named Sid Barrett. Sid Barrett was the founder of then psychedelic, later prog rock British group Pink Floyd. He had severe mental health problems, probably schizophrenia, left the band before they achieved worldwide fame. Mental health is a recurring theme throughout their work, including Brain Damage, the last and virtual title track on the Dark Side of the Moon, and Shine On You Crazy Diamond, which is specifically about Barrett. Let's see. And, and yeah, so the dog figurine that the man in the green suit carves puts in front of David during the interrogation is the same dog symbol that is on the outside of Clockworks. And though that dog has a clock in his mouth, the carved one does not. Also, when the dog figurine is first given to David, it is facing him potentially showing he is being watched and not in control. But a few minutes later it is flipped and facing the interrogators, which soon after David realizes they are actually afraid of him and he has the upper hand. Yeah, Colors and lighting play incredibly important roles in this show. Red is usually a sign that something is wrong and chaotic, that David may use his powers, while blue is usually in relation to Sid and is shown things are going right and are calmer. Yellow is used in relation to the yellow-eyed demon. Right, yeah. David is seen in a wheelchair early on in the episode of the hospital, reference to Charles Xavier. And let's see. Um uh, Okay, so yeah, there's some there's some factual errors according to Goofs, which, yeah, some of the signs on the wall have word welcome written in various languages. The Greek version is wrong. And the Arabic one is written in the individual letters left to right instead of right to left, which, yeah, that's, you know, they, they basically just translated, yeah, to, uh, translated without taking into account that there's that difference. Yeah. And I think that might be Let's see. Um yeah. I will do the second episode tomorrow. Really looking forward to it. All animals need physical contact to feel love. You know those cartoons, like magazines? There's a man on there with like maybe a single palm tree. People say, go to your happy place, and that's what I think about.